Seabus. So in order to get started installing my French drain system, I'm going to put the primary catch basins in place first. These are the receptacles that catch most of the water. Um, they'll have a grate across the top, and the grate across the top will be level or just slightly below level of the grass surface. Now these go together pretty easy. Um, they just have a connector right here, and they twist lock in place like this. And then all you'll do is slide your pipe into this side. I usually like to put a screw or two screws in there just to hold the pipe while we're assembling the whole drainage system. Uh, the real trick of this is to make sure that you find the right height for the catch basin. These are catch basin risers. So they'll just fit on the top of the catch basin like this to extend the height to your grate. These are six inch increments. They do make other increments of that. Uh, so simply, you'll measure down to where your gravel is and you'll measure up to the height of your trench and you'll use your risers like this to get to the height you need. In my spot that we just looked at over here is about 24 inches. So what we're gonna do uh, is the same thing I did when I dug this trench. And I went across each section of the trench. I just put my tape measure down in there uh, to measure across to where it's at. And you can see by my boot, uh, we're at about 23 inches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that catch basin on about an inch or two of gravel. We're actually gonna dig it down just a teeny bit more so we can set the basin in. Um, what we'll find is that the catch basin is 22 inches to the top. So almost right to the height that we need on the catch basin to get this grate to be right at the surface. Wow, it's humid out here. Um, so next thing I'm going to do is set my catch basins in and get them to the right height. And then I'll verify with my laser level that those catch basins are at the right height and that, and that the catch basins are downhill from one another. So we're going to have three catch basins in this situation. There'll be one over here, one in this corner, which is my primary one. And then a third one right by that tree. So what we'll do is after I get the catch basins to the correct height, we'll verify with the level that number one catch basin is the highest, number two catch basin is in the middle center point, and that number three catch basin is lowest. And from that point down, uh, we have about three feet of drop from that point down. So from that point down is not really all that important. We know it's graded the right way. The water will flow easily. Uh, I keep mentioning the laser level and a couple of high tech tools. You can do these drainage jobs yourself without those high tech tools. These make it faster, more accurate and easier. But you know, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, I didn't use uh, laser levels. What I would use is a, now, called a mason, mason line. line. It's basically just a string, a lot like kite string, and you'll put a level uh, on the string. It's called a line level. You would stretch your string really tight on both ends so it's completely taut, and then you would put your level in there. Uh, you'd make sure that that string is level and you'd run it parallel with your trench. That way you could easily measure up and down to the so bottom of your trench. Similar on using one of these measuring sticks, except instead of having a laser line that goes across, you actually have a physical string line that goes across, and you can use a measuring stick to measure from your string line down to the base of the trench, up or down, and you can still find your level. A string only costs you a few bucks, and a, a line level is usually less than five bucks. So for 10 bucks, you can do the same thing instead of having a $1,000 uh, laser level. Well, I gotta get some gravel in the hole, and then uh, we're going to place these catch basins, and I'll give you an update. So now that I've verified the height that my catch basins need to be, I'm ready to put my gravel in. I'm going to go ahead and assemble my catch basins. Now this is a two outlet catch basin. Uh, they make multiple outlets depending on how many you have. Um, some of them are single outlets. Some of them uh, have holes where you can punch out and put up to four. Um, these are straight through my run, so basically I'll just have a pipe that connects on each side so the water can flow through. Uh, after that, I'm going to take my riser, put my riser on the top, and now 
What I like to do for assembly purposes is just take a drill, have an eighth inch drill bit. I'm going to put a drill one hole through there. Don't want to just put the screw in because you can crack it. Then I'm just going to use an exterior screw like you would use on a deck, anything simple. I'm going to run it in like this. It doesn't have to be tight, it's just to hold this together during assembly. So now this is all assembled, it won't come apart when I put it in the hole. It's not going to shift or jostle, and then my grate's going to go right on top. Uh, now the grate has pre-screwed uh, hole or pre-holes in here that you can put screws in if you want to. Uh, a lot of times I don't even put screws in there, it depends on the situation. Um, so this one's ready to go. Let me get to the next one and I'll show you how we put them in the ground. Well, now we have all the pipe and the catch basins installed. Uh, so um, it's time to check our level and make sure all the grade is still good. So based on that, we're just going to use our level marks and um, register from the top of the pipe to make sure we have a downhill slope on everything. But as I'm getting ready to do that, why don't we look at um, how everything goes together? It's pretty simple just to put the pipe down in the hole. However, you want to put about three to four inches of gravel in the hole first and then just rake it. I find it's easiest to rake the gravel um, just with a spade like this uh, because the spade easily fits inside the trench like this. And that way if you need to shovel gravel back and forth to make it level, uh, you can do that, or if you need to scoop some to move it, you can do that also. Uh, make sure that your catch basins like this are to grade. Um, now we're going to grade this up here, so there's about an inch height difference right here. Uh, but when we're finished, the finished surface is going to be slightly higher and taper down to it. Um, if you're within about an inch, you're probably good. Something to keep in mind is that, you know, you're bringing in a lot of gravel. If you notice on this job, we've got a heck of a big pile of gravel sitting over there. Uh, we've got about eight tons of gravel to do this. Well, that gravel is going to displace all the area in the trench. So, of course, your dirt is not going to fit back in there. So think about that. You're going to have to find a way to get rid of the dirt uh, when you do this project. Uh, that's something that some homeowners have problems with um, because they have no way to haul the dirt away. Um, so, anyway, um, you can see how I put this catch basin together. Um, there is uh, simply an elbow right here and over here I've got the short piece of pipe that goes into the bottom of the catch basin and then I have my two risers on the catch basin with the grate. And you'll notice everywhere that I have a connection where the pipe goes into a fitting I put one screw in. I just like to screw those in that way when I'm moving the pipe around and everything fill it with gravel nothing wants to pop apart or come loose. Uh, so you can see here we've got a T that runs down our other trench. Uh, not quite finished putting gravel in here yet, uh, but I've got a T over here. Just come to our catch basin over there. Like I said, this catch basin is still below grade because I haven't added three to four inches of gravel yet. After we add our gravel back in there, uh, that catcher basin will be right up at the surface like it should be. So as we follow the pipe down, uh, you'll notice that uh, we've just put the pipe in the hole. Down to our next ca catch basin. If you notice on this catch basin, it's not quite as deep in the ground. Um, so we only have one riser and you can see our two screws there. Now something to note about the gravel in a situation. You might notice we've used gravel that's uh, rounds. Um, these are called 57s rounds, and they're going to be somewhere about a quarter an inch to an inch in size, most of these. And they're round stone, and they're washed. They're called 57 rounds washed. Uh, you want washed gravel, um, and preferably not limestone. Uh, if you get limestone gravel, the limestone dust uh, can clog your, your filter sock pretty easily. That's why you want washed gravel. If the gravel is not washed, 
then uh, what happens is the dirt uh, will kind of stick to your filter sock and it'll make it clog a little more easily. Um, so as we go past this catch basin, that's pretty much the drainage problem area. The rest of this yard is sloped downhill towards the street. It has a natural run. So what we could have done is this pipe uh, could have been a solid core pipe. But for ease uh, of having the same pipe and everything, I've just put a regular filter pipe in. Uh, however, we don't really need to use as much gravel. We'll cover it up with gravel. Um, that way the pipe uh, retains its shape and its stability. We just don't need to use as much. So as you see, as we get down at the bottom of the trench, um, we've had to go under things like the gas line right here, downspout pipe, another downspout pipe. As we get down to the bottom, you can see I've cut a hole in the main uh, drain tile that goes down into the um, residential drain for the neighborhood. Uh, so what I've done is I just used a sawzall and I cut a hole and I basically um, stuck my pipe through there. Uh, to make the pipe go through easier, I cut a slit in the pipe. That way I could compress it and get it through the hole. Uh, then I poked it out about four inches and I put a screw in here and then I put a screw in over here that goes through this pipe and into the other one. Uh, hopefully this is helping you out. Uh, we are ready to put gravel back in the hole on top. So now we're going to fill our trench to within about four inches of the top, three to four inches of the top. That way we leave that much room for topsoil. Um, all the rest of that will be gravel. Uh, that gravel will um, allow a place for the water to uh, accumulate. That way, the, when it rains, uh, basically the water will be able to go down into the soil, in the gravel, and then go through the perforated pipe, through the filter sock, and drain out into the main drain tile. Uh, water will always pick the path of least resistance, so if you give it somewhere easy to run to, that's the way that the water will go. Um, now, one last tip when you're getting ready to put your gravel in the hole, the rest of it, uh, be sure that you have your pipe all the way to the ground. In some situations, you may want to have someone working with you uh, stand on the pipe if it's not level or push it down when you put your gravel in the hole. Uh, otherwise, sometimes your gravel can go under the pipe and force it up. Uh, if that happens, then you will lose some of your grade there. That will give you a bit of a problem. The pipe gives it an easy way to flow, uh, but the grade of the trench uh, really helps facilitate the movement of the water down to where you want it. So keep watching, we're going to get this wrapped up. Okay, so we're coming along. Um, trying to hurry because thunderstorms right above me looks like it's gonna rain again uh, so I'm trying to get the gravel mostly in here I've got the pipe in at least three to four inches of gravel above the pipe below the pipe and around the pipe um, that way the pipe is surrounded by uh, three or four inches of gravel that gives the pipe stability uh, so it doesn't crush so easily also, it allows for the drainage that we're looking for. Um, up through here, you can see I've set the catch basins. And with the catch basins, um, I normally start my installation once I find the height and the placement of the catch basins. When I start installing the gravel, I do it around the catch basins first. Uh, I like to carefully make sure that my catch base is in place put gravel all the way around it, all the way, almost uh, two-thirds to the top, and then I throw a little bit of topsoil around there um, just so we can pack it in good. Uh, up through here I've got gravel. Noticed through my trench I've left about four to six inches on the top of the trench for topsoil. This will allow uh, so that we can put uh, grass back when we're all done, gives us somewhere to um, settle. There's a little spot right there I'll have to fill in. The other catch basin here. So I actually started with this one first. 
go grab all around it. And then after I had my catch basins in place, I worked my way away from the catch basins. And secondly, I went up and I worked my way to the junction points right here. Now this run back here, I haven't messed with just yet uh, because I need to get this dirt out of the way before I can do that. So on this one over here, I just sat the pipe in, but I still need to put gravel underneath the pipe and level the pipe before I get that finished. Uh, before I can do that, I need to clear all this dirt out of the way. Um, this is one area where I started to, um, we had the pipe running through here with gravel. I've already pushed it back, all the dirt. So my next step over here is just to touch up this little spot. Then I'm going to take some of this dirt, actually I'm going to take some of that dirt and move it over here and fill in this trench. Uh, that way I can, uh, I can kind of let the dirt get in here, start to settle. When it rains, it'll settle some more. And then I'm going to have to wait for it to dry out before I can finish grade it. Um, but for now, we can have the pipe in. The drainage is functional now because we have the pipe and the gravel in, except for one little section there. Uh, so when this thunderstorm comes, should be good to go. Uh, the water will run in my trench. It'll expel down at the point where it's supposed to in the, into the uh, county drain tile. So hopefully this has helped. Uh, keep watching, and here in a little while, my next uh, will be the wrap-up. Yeah, so it's raining uh, pretty steady now. Yeah, so had to pack it up. It started raining on me. Of course, uh, when you're digging with all that dirt and mud in the trench, not really where you want to do uh, a wet job. I'm no stranger to working in the rain, that's for sure, but sometimes uh, you just uh, feel like you're whipping a dead horse. You make a bigger problem, bigger mess for yourself than if you just, uh, if you just stopped while you're ahead. So that's what I did. Uh, I've got about 30 foot left to do. Then, of course, I need some dry weather to come back and do the finished grading. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll get that done. Actually, tomorrow's holiday, so I'm not going to be able to go out to the house and work tomorrow, so it's going to sit there a day. Don't really like that, because the longer that dirt sits on the ground there, um, you know, the more likely it's to yellow or kill part of the grass, and that's just going to make for a little more area that I have to do some reseeding. Oh well, what do you do? Uh, another day, another dollar.